Pastor John here. We had quite a night at Christmas Eve at Warrington Bible Fellowship. We had four churches join us. Mount Zion Baptist Church, Mission Christian Emmanuel, Veritas, and of course Warrington Bible Fellowship came together to proclaim the gospel in word and song. We adjourned from the sanctuary and walked over to the courthouse at the end of the service and sang Silent Night as we proclaimed the gospel from the middle of town. So I hope you enjoy the service. Let's join it now as it begins. I'd like to welcome you to Warrington Bible Fellowship in our Christmas Eve service. Merry Christmas, everybody. We are on the cusp of what I believe is an historic moment. One of the dreams uh, that we've had in recent years is to find the church at Warrington, <laughs> to find out if God was going to write a letter, who's he going to send it to in Warrington? Well, we now have four churches gathered here. It's the first time we've been able to do this on Christmas Eve, and we are the church in Warrington. Amen? Amen. Amen. We have uh, Iglesia Mission Christian Emmanuel. Uh, is with us this evening. Uh, Pastor Juan and Nikki Reyes are here. Mount Zion Baptist Church, Pastor Keith and Annette McCullough are here. Veritas Church with Pastor Zach and Carrie Ritz. And of course me, I'm John Kavakis. I'm the pastor of Warrington Bible Fellowship and my wife Kelly, and we welcome you warmly. So we've got a lot going on, and one of the things that we're doing that we're kind of excited about uh, you'll hear more details later, but after the service, for those who are able to, we're going to walk over to the courthouse and by candlelight do a short gospel message and sing Silent Light Night. So you'll have the opportunity to join us with that. You people online, thank you for joining us. Uh, you can be praying for us after we leave the sanctuary that the message of the gospel and the salvation of Jesus Christ is available to all people who repent. So let's pray, and then we'll move on with our service. Father, we give you thanks, not just for this time of season, Lord, where the world turns its attention towards you. We give you thanks, Father, because we're gathered here. Your spirit is here. We pray now, Lord, that your spirit would have his way with us. Lord, that you would give us attentive minds and hearts that yearn to be filled with your word and your truth. And Father, as we lift up your name in praise and in song and in word, Father. We pray that you would be honored in how we gather. And we now ask you, Father, to bless all those who participate, all the many hands that have made this service happen, Father, and make your presence known among us, Father. We might hear your voice and feel your touch. And we pray this in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we'll turn to the lighting of the Advent candles. Good evening and Merry Christmas. The first candle we're going to light this evening is the prophet's candle, and it represents hope. The second candle is the Bethlehem candle, and it represents faith. The third candle we light is the shepherd's candle, which represents joy. And the fourth candle is the angel's candle, which represents peace. The fifth and final candle is the Christ candle. It is white to remind us of the spotless Lamb of God who died for our sins. John says in chapter 1, verse 29, the next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John further says in chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Good evening, everyone, and Merry Christmas. My name's Jeff Foley, and this is my beautiful wife, Lays. Um, we're going to read some scripture for you from out of Genesis. Um, I'm going to read in English, and then she's going to read in Spanish. So here we go. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless, that I may make a covenant between me and you and may multiply you greatly. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, 
Behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be the father of multitudes of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the father of multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make you into nations, and kings shall come to you. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and your offspring after you. El pacto confirmado. Cuando Abraham tenía 99 años, el Señor le apareció y le dijo, Yo soy el Dios Todopoderoso. Anda delante de mí y sé perfecto. Y yo estableceré mi pacto contigo y te multiplicaré en gran manera. Entonces Abraham se postró su rostro y Dios habló con él diciendo, En cuanto a mí, he aquí mi pacto es contigo y serás padre de multitud de naciones. Y no serás llamado más Abraham, sino que tu nombre será Abraham, porque yo te haré padre de multitud de naciones. Te haré fecundo en gran manera, y de ti haré naciones, y de ti saldrán reyes, y estableceré mi pacto contigo y con tu descendencia, después de ti, por todas sus generaciones, por pacto eterno de ser Dios tuyo, y de toda tu descendencia después de ti, y te daré a ti y a tu descendencia, después de ti, la tierra de tus peregrinaciones, toda la tierra de Canaán, como posesión perpetua, y yo seré tu Dios. I'm coming to you from 2 Samuel 7, verses 12 through 17. When your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your fathers, 
I will raise up your offering after you, who shall come from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. When he commits iniquity, I will discipline him with the rod of men, with the stripes of the sons of men. But my steadfast love will not depart from him as I took it from Saul, whom I put away from before you. And your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. In accordance with all these words and in accordance with all this vision, Nathan spoke to David.
God bless you, everybody. Uh, my name is Juan Reyes. I'm the pastor in the uh, Mission Christian Emmanuel here in Warrington. And um, we're going to read in some um, verse in the Bible. I'm going to do it in Spanish. And then uh, my wife, Nikki, she's going to do it in, in English. We're going to read in um, Isaías 7.14, Isaías 9.2, Isaías 6 al 7. Isaías 7.14. Dice así, honrando al Señor Jesucristo, dice así, Por tanto, el Señor mismo os dará, os dará señal, he aquí que la Virgen concebirá y dará a luz un hijo y llamará su nombre Emanuel. Isaías 9 9.2 dice, el pueblo que andaba en tinieblas vio gran luz. Los que moraban en tierra de sombra de muerte, luz les resplandeció sobre ellos. Isaías 9.6 y 7 dice, porque un niño nos es nacido, hijo nos es dado, y el principado sobre su hombro y se llamará su nombre admirable, consejero, Dios fuerte, Padre eterno, príncipe de paz. Lo dilatado de su imperio y la paz no tendrá límite sobre el trono de David y sobre su reino disponiéndolo y confirmándolo en juicio y en justicia desde ahora y para siempre. El celo de Jehová de los ejércitos hará esto. Amen. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwell in the land of the deep darkness, on them has light shown. For us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name should be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of of the increase of the government of peace, there will be no end on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From this time forth and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Amen. Oh, 
A decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region were, flock, were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night and an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, 
I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign for you. You will find a ba the babe wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Peace on earth and mercy mild God and sinners reconciled from them into heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told to them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told to them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, and as it was told to them.
You may be seated. You may be seated. And Merry Christmas to everyone. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Wow, this is so great. Man, thank you so much, Pastor John Warrington Bible Fellowship, for hosting us tonight. Thank you so much. It is so great to be here. And uh, Mount Zion Mission Christian, thank you for letting Veritas Church join you this Christmas. This is, this, is, this is our first Christmas together as a church, and so great to be able to share it with you all. So thank you all for having us. Uh, those of you who don't know me, my name is Zach Ritz. I'm the pastor of Veritas Church. And hey, y'all, you got to know something about me. I love Christmas. I love Christmas. I love everything Christmas. I love uh, uh, Christmas colors. I like Christmas carols. Hey, I like Christmas kids. I, I like Christmas cookies. Anybody else have the Christmas cookies? Can I get an amen, kids, for the Christmas cookies? Got some big kids out there giving some amens, too. Okay. Hey, Christmas cookies. I, I even love, um, not only, the, I love Christmas movies. I love Christmas parades. Uh, and of course, I love Christmas presents. Oh, anybody else? Christmas presents. Anybody looking forward tomorrow morning for some Christmas presents? You know, even more than Christmas trees, you know what I love? I love Christmas lights. I love Christmas lights. Oh, my goodness. Um, so we, we drove around even last night looking just for Christmas lights because we love going and seeing Christmas lights. Anybody like going to see the Christmas lights? I know. Isn't it great? Thank you all, okay, for that electric bill that you're paying uh, for our enjoyment th this year. Okay, thank you all. Uh, be some beautiful houses decorated with Christmas lights. Hey, growing up, my dad was like Clark Griswold. Okay, y'all get the reference, Clark Griswold? Yeah. Christmas vacation, my dad, right, he would put lights on the house, lights on the garage, okay, lights uh, even as you're going in. We live kind of back in the woods a little bit, okay, so there's some lights even on the trees. Winter Wonderland, okay, is what we call it. Pappy's Winter Wonderland is what the kids call it now. And I tell you what, it was like drum roll, please, right? Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? And then Boom, and then, wow, you know, you can see my house from miles. Now, kids, help me out here. When's the best time to go see Christmas lights? Should you go in the morning after breakfast? Should you go see Christmas lights in the morning after breakfast? No, no, okay. In the afternoon? After lunch? No. After dinner, you should see them at night, right? And you know what? Those lights seem to shine all the brighter when they're surrounded by a canopy of darkness. The darker the night, the brighter the lights. Yeah, the brighter the lights. Man, those Christmas lights, not only the nativity scene, but even all the Christmas lights should exist to point us to Jesus, who is the true light of the world. Amen? Amen. And I'll tell you what, when Jesus came, when the light of the world came, oh, it was a dark night. Oh, it was a dark night, not only in Bethlehem, but all around the world. Oh, because of sin and shame, the sin and separation from, from, from the light of the glory of God because of our sin. Brothers and sisters, help me out here. The darkness in our world when Jesus showed up John actually compares it all the way back to Genesis. In John chapter 1, he points it all the way back to Genesis. Because you all know Jesus was there too. As, right, okay, the Son of God. He was there too, all the way back to in the beginning. Matter of fact, John says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Matter of fact, everything that God created was made through him. It's not a single thing that you have in your life, not a single blessing that you have in your life or sitting beside you right now that doesn't come down from the Father of lights. Every good and perfect gift comes to us from God. Isn't this a crazy thing, kids? Tomorrow's is whose birthday? Whose birthday tomorrow? Jesus. Jesus' birthday. But you know, he lets you open his presence. Hey, that is a generous Lord, if you ask me. He lets us open his presence. But I tell you what, every good and perfect gift that you have in your life comes down to you from the Father of lights. 
For indeed, all things were made through him, uh, just like in the very beginning. When God created the heavens and the earth, but the world was what? The world was void and was formless. And darkness was over the face of the deep. Ah, but the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. So what did God then say? The Word of God went forth. God said to the darkness and formless creation, God said, drum roll please. Right? God said, let there be light. And there was light. And there was light. And you know what John says? In the darkness of Bethlehem, in the darkness of our world, because of the sin of our first parents, Adam and Eve, and even since then, we all contribute to it too. Oh, the darkness seemed to have overcome the light of God's good creation. Oh, sin seems to mess everything up, does it not? And, and darkness seemed to have overcome the light. Oh, but the Word came and was made flesh in Bethlehem, born in the manger. The light of the world shone forth, and the darkness could not overcome it. John 1, 5. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness could not overcome it. And I'll tell you what. Y'all may not know John chapter 1 or even Genesis chapter 1, but if you know Jesus, guess what? I, you know your Genesis chapter 1, and you know that's exactly how Jesus found you. In the darkness of sin and shame, separated from God, the Lord Jesus shone forth his light of salvation into your life, and guess what? A new creation was born, and he turned your darkness into light, saving you from your sins, cleansing you from your shame, drum roll please, and transformed you, and transferred you from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his beloved son. That's where you're at right now, child of God, brother and sister in Christ, no longer dwelling in darkness. For a people who were dwelling in darkness, on them a light has shone. And you have the light of Christ in you. So, hey, no matter how dark this world gets, and hey, it can get pretty dark. A lot of sin out there, isn't it? It can get pretty dark in our world, can it not? I'll tell you what. Even if you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, the Lord Jesus will illuminate your path, and his rod and his staff will comfort you. Because you have Jesus. Brother and sister, you have Jesus. And if you don't know Jesus tonight, and you're here in church, as a matter of fact, you know, that happens. People who don't know Jesus end up coming to church. Do you know that even a, a, a gal that couldn't be here with us tonight who helped put on this whole thing, thank you so much, Diane, for everything that you did behind the scenes. Diane Strange came to faith in Jesus on Christmas Eve, at a Christmas Eve service. The light of Christ shone forth into her heart, and drew her unto himself. I tell you what, if you don't know Jesus, you're still dwelling in darkness. In the darkness of your sin, in the darkness of your shame, in the darkness of separation from God. But the light of Christ, may it shine forth. And if you see the light, follow the light. Okay, come on. Come to Jesus tonight. What a perfect night to come to the Lord Jesus Christ and to see your darkness turn to light. Now I'll give you a chance to do that in here just a minute, but, but, but brothers and sisters, let me conclude with this. You know we're going to have a candlelit service tonight. There's a reason for that, because Jesus didn't just shine his light to you. He wants to shine his light, come on, through you. Didn't just shine his light to you so that you could be saved, but wants to shine his light through you so that those who are dwelling in darkness in your life might come to know him. And so, brothers and sisters, you know that's why we do candlelit services, not just to be cute and sing Silent Night, you know, uh, but we're going to do that too, okay? But it, it, it's because this is what usually happens. We light the Christ candle, and then from the light of the world Christ, we then pass the light one to the next 
and to the next, representing Christ, who is the light of the world, who gave the gospel to the disciples, and then to the apostles who got sent out, and then took the gospel to the ends of the earth. Hey, thousands of years later, even to you. But don't let it stop with you, right? We light, and then you pass the light to the next person, even generations, right? Parents, grandparents in here, to your, to your children and your children's children, likewise. You know what normally happens, though? We, we, we put the lights down real low in the church. We all light our candles. And then you know what happens next? We say, pastor says, okay, y'all, now go forth and shine your light into the dark world. And we say, amen. <laughs> and then, okay, you can take that. And I burn my hand, right? And so, and we go about our Christmas day. Well, you know what we're going to do tonight? We're all going to march in procession as four churches but with one voice to declare the gospel to a dark world. Hey, I don't even know that anybody's going to be out there listening, but I'll tell you what, we're going to be singing and we're going to be proclaiming. And so we're going to go forth and we're going to shine that light. It may just serve as a reminder to us that as we are, while we are out in our community, may it not just be tonight, but all the people that are in our life, let us shine the light of Christ to them. And again, this is going to be not for Veritas' glory, not for Warrington Bible Fellowship glory, not for Mount Zion or Mission Christian glory, but for the glory of Christ Jesus. Amen? That's why we're all here tonight. Let's go ahead and pray, and then let us sing, and then we'll go forth. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. Lord Jesus, thank you for shining your light into our lives, those of us who know you. Lord, we can even be reminded of the first day, Lord, that we came to know you. Lord, thank you for the faith also that's been passed down generation to generation, even here in this room. And Lord Jesus, we ask even for those that don't know you that are here tonight. May tonight be the first night, Lord, that they not only believe that you came and were born, but that you grew up, Lord Jesus, lived a perfect life, died a sinner's death, took our place on the cross so that we could have a place in your kingdom and at your table as a member of your family. Lord Jesus, I pray tonight that if someone doesn't know you, that they would place their faith fully and only in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus so that they too would be saved. Amen. Lord God, we thank you, and we now sing, Lord, all to your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. You may stand as we sing our final song. of our efforts stand no legacy survive unless the Lord does raise the house in vain its builders try do you who boast tomorrow's gain tell me what is your life amidst that vanishes at dawn all glory be to Christ. All glory be to Christ, our King. All glory be to Christ. His rule and reign will ever sing. All glory be to Christ. His will be done, His kingdom come on earth as it daily bread praise him the lord of love let living water satisfy the thirsty with the price we'll take a cup of kindness yet all glory be to christ all glory be to Christ our King. All glory be to Christ. His rule and reign will ever sing. All glory be to Christ. When on that day the great I am, the faithful and the true, the Lamb who was for sinners slain is making all things new. Behold our God.
God shall live with us and be our steadfast light. And we shall ere his people be all glory be to Christ. All glory be to Christ our King. All glory be to Christ. His rule and reign will ever sing. All glory be to Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, hey, from here, let me give some directions for those that will be joining us for our procession to the courthouse. Um, I believe the newspaper is going to be there. So, hey, if you're going to give a quote, all right, give them the gospel and point them to Jesus, okay? Um, so, uh, as we go forth, uh, Pastor John uh, there, who, who introduced us in, in the beginning, uh, he's going to kind of lead the way. But I'll just let me share with you. We'll pick up candles, okay, right here in the back. Grab your candles, okay, one for each member of the family, all right? And then we'll go from there. We're going to go around up the bank uh, to the bank, so Winchester, okay? We'll do the crosswalk to Miller's Carpet, all right? And then one more crosswalk over to the courthouse, okay? If that made sense to you, uh, you're a Warrentonian, okay? <laughs> well, and if not, you know what? Uh, just follow behind somebody who knows, seems like they know where they're going, okay? Uh, and we'll do that. All right, amen. Hey, you all may be dismissed. Let's go forth. Pastor John, I hope you were blessed by the service. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll be doing it again next year. Thanks for joining us, and we want to wish you a very Merry Christmas.